So we're gonna build a little divider fence off here. So we thought it's a fantastic opportunity to show you the uh, fence alignment kit from Redback Lasers. So that fence alignment kit will either operate with the DGL 1010 GM or the EGL 624 GM laser from Redback Lasers. The reason these lasers, they both have a vertical mode of operation and will track to the receiver. And we'll go through why that's so important shortly. In the fence alignment kit, we've got the offset bracket for the uh, laser. We've got your scope and scope mount that goes onto the back of the laser. And we'll show you how that goes on shortly. And finally, your offset bracket for your receiver. So it comes with the little attachment bracket and our receiver mount. So firstly, we've got the, um, the receiver set up there. So we've bolted this bracket physically onto our staff, okay? And then that offset bracket is set up either on the first hole, which is for a DGL 1010 GM, or the second hole if we've got an EGL 624 GM. Now we can mount that off to the left or off to the right, depending on which way we're shooting that fence. So for this situation, we need it on the left and we're using a DGL 1010 GM. So we'll put it onto that first hole. Now that gives us a predetermined offset from the center of the staff to our receiver, which we need when we go and put the um, scope alignment bracket onto our laser. So if we set up our laser, so firstly, we're gonna take our laser offset bracket and um, put it onto our staff or under our tripod. You can see we've located our tripod as close as we comfortably can to what is gonna be our end post because we're running our fence off here. So we just fix that on and tighten that on as tight as we can. That now gives us the ability to shift our laser into our perfect position. Grabbing our laser and our, uh, our scope mount bracket, that scope mount bracket gets bolted onto our bottom laser mount. And that laser, because it does have that vertical ability, screws onto the rotation plate as part of the, um, think the offset bracket. Now, we can loosen the offset bracket and we've got now free flow to rotate that laser as required. And then we've got a fine tune adjustment there to actually fine tune and adjust that laser in the direction we're after. So what we're after firstly is getting vertical plumb under where our scope's gonna be down onto our scope. So we've got that set up nicely. I'm gonna grab my scope. And my scope goes on the top there. So now you can see I'm gonna scope fence line and I'm gonna laser an offset, which is why we have the laser offset bracket for the receiver. We're now going to scope when we're marking at our posts, we can mark to, or we'll pick up with our receiver on the laser and we're marking our fence line with the staff, straight down the staff so we can pick that up all the way. But the very first thing we need to do is make sure our scope is perfectly aligned with our laser. So to do that, we need to turn on our laser. We need to come back, scope off our strainer in the distance. So we've got a post we're working to there, which I'll come and scope off shortly. We can adjust and get our laser aiming perfectly at that point. Then we go down to that point up to 50 meters away. So this is important. We've got to be within 50 meters to do that first calibration in. Up to 50 meters away, go down to where the laser is now, where we've scoped off the strainer and then we'll track it into the receiver and our laser will be set to the receiver. So anyway, I'll come and scope that in. So I've loosened off the little locking knob there, sighting across the top of the scope. I can aim the laser roughly in the direction I'm after, tightening off the locking knob and now with the adjuster wheel, I can sight through, well, I've got it perfect anyway. So but I can get that absolutely dead center of post. Now we've got our laser set, the scope's aiming at the post. What we've got to do is calibrate that receiver with the offset so that those two lines are parallel. So before we head down the other end, we're gonna to need to power up that laser. Just let it go through its boot up sequence. 
And then remember to hit that VWS button, that vibration wind sensor will just desensitize that laser. We're working in a little bit of wind here, so we just want the laser to be a little bit less sensitive. Anyway, let's head down the other end of the fence. So we've got our staff in the center of the post. That's where we sighted off with our scope. Um, now you'll see that the receivers on my side of the, um, of the post are on the staff, which matches the lasers on the same side of the fence. So that's what I was saying before about making sure that bracket's on the correct side. We're gonna turn on our receiver and then hit our channel. And our tracking, that's gone to a fast blue flash so we know that the tracking's commenced. And now it's just a waiting game, we'll wait for that laser to track in. And we can hear it already, it's starting to find it. It'll track in and lock to the receiver. And once it does that, we've then got that laser directly parallel all the way through to that point. Okay, so at that point in time, I'm going to turn off that volume. That's actually tracked into the receiver. We've now got our scope line and our laser line parallel to each other. So the truth is, if we're doing a fence under 50 metres, we're right to go. We've tracked into our laser, we can follow that laser beam across and transfer our post down to the bottom of our staff. If we were wanting to do a longer distance fence, we can now, looking through the scope, aim at a strainer further in the distance and then follow our fence through. So the very first thing you need to do is always calibrate the laser to the scope. Don't go and turn the laser off at the power button on the laser itself. Use the power on the remote control if you're wanting to shift that laser. Every time we turn it off on the laser itself, we do have to recalibrate the laser to the scope. Anyway, from this point of view, we can now go out and mark out our fence line. So our fence here is about 50 metres long. We want to put another subdividing fence down at 25 metres and some gates either side. So the very first post I want to mark out is actually the centre post. So I've got to pace in 25 metres. All right, so we've paced out our 25 metres. There's our laser somewhere in that vicinity. All righty, so now if we pick up our laser beam, It says we're about three mil out. The other thing I'm going to check, there's a bullseye vial on the back of the laser, on the back of the staff. I want to get that correct. Yeah. So here we can use the millimeter receiver, about 23 mil out, 10 mil out. There it is. We're floating around five mil out. That's our point. Now, if we had some marker paint, we could just start marking out our posts. We've got to put a um, two gates in either side here. I'm not going to get around to fencing this straight away, so I thought if I put some star droppers in, they're a bit more permanent, and um, I won't lose my marks. Okay, so we've got that post in, but what this now shows us is, if we were putting in posts as we went away from that laser, we can still pick up that laser beam because we're not being shadowed by the fence on the laser. We're always measuring that offset. So we can go and mark out all our posts continually after, we could be ramming and working as we go, never worried about that we are going to get um, our laser to be shadowed. So I've already gone and mark out the rest of this fence, but one more feature I do want to point out is say we were working down in a ravine, we can now put this on a five meter staff, listen, pick up our, um, our laser, checking our bullseye vial, we can transfer from a point way up in the air, so if we're down in a ravine, we can still pick up the laser way out of sight of that laser beam itself, transferring it down into the ground, onto the ground. Try to do that with a strainer wire. Anyway, it looks like I've got a bit of work ahead of me. So um, I'll catch us around. <laughs>